cursor, the AI IDE has changed a lot in the last couple of months. So I wanted to give you a no nonsense guide of how you can get started with cursor in 2025. The very first thing that you have to do is you have to think like a product manager instead of thinking like a developer. I mean, this is not something that is going to go well with a lot of developers because we take pride in the code that we write. But you know, you have to understand the reality and you have to put in the effort to create a PRD, a product requirement document, just like how product managers get paid to do in a lot of companies. And you don't have to do it with a product manager, rather you can go to ChatGPT or Claude and then give your requirement and ask it to create a PRD. So for example, in this case, I've got a project goal, which is very important for cursor to understand what we are trying to do. And I've got some examples and more important, I've got a tech stack that I'm going to ask cursor to do it. And I've also added success metrics for cursor to understand what is that final thing. And then finally, I've told what is out of scope. So these are the things it is not going to do. So having this kind of a product document will ensure that there is always a North Star to look after. And then we have more consistency. And giving this product document, for example, I all I wanted is a simple uh, dashboard that can display some key metrics and I've gave it to cursor and then cursor beautifully created something for me. When it created something for me, the biggest problem was the API connection did not work. Then all I had to do is go and then say what is the error message. And then it kind of worked for me in just like one custom message. So I've got this entire thing. I can refresh it. It is going to get the information for me. And then all it is going to do is display the information. So PRD is the key for everything that you're going to do. If you are a developer like me who already hated PRD, I'm sorry to say that that is something that you need to have. The next very important thing is there are some projects where you need to have cursor rules. There are some projects you can get away without having cursor rules. Now, if you're not familiar with cursor rules, cursor rule is this particular file that is going to be inside your project folder that is going to instruct cursor how things should be done. So this is like this long document which will basically set the Bible of how cursor should behave. Like it's the rules, it's the legal document by which cursor should do everything that is within the context. So this is very important. You can set project wise cursor rules or global cursor rules. The recommendation is to do for every single project. So your stack might change, things might change. I'll link this cursor rule in the YouTube description. You can get started with that. Now, what I told you before is to get started from a project completely from scratch. But the, my biggest recommendation for you is do not do any project from scratch using cursor always start from an existing project. For example, I've got this project called Viber 3D. So this is an easy way for you to get started with Vibe coding. So I would say what you have to do is you have to go to cursor, probably like go to your terminal and then just get out of your current session. So let me show you how you can get out of your current session in cursor. So you have got, uh, let me close this for now. And you have got CD dot dot. So after you go, you can just do git clone and copy this one here. So copy this one. And the best thing that you have to do is you have to get started with an existing project that will give you a lot of advantages and context for cursor. So I've uh, cloned this repository locally. So now I'm going to enter into it. So I'm going to say Viber 3D. And after I do it, I'm going to say cursor space dot. And that will open a new window for me to build something with cursor. Now this already has got the dot cursor, which has got cursor rules. So that part is taken care of. Now all I have to do is figure out how to build all those things. And now once you have replicated a folder, replicated a repo, you've got a lot of options to build on top of it. So for example, I've got these three options within cursor. One is an agent mode, the ask mode and the edit mode. Edit mode is good, really good. If you have got an existing file, for example, you can go to the scripts here and then there is a release.ts. You select everything and then you can select edit mode. So you have edit mode and then you can do some edit there. If you are trying to do something much more beyond that, right, let's say more than one file, agent mode is always good if you want to have code based context, like the entire code based context. The other way you can tell cursor to look into a particular file is by using add. So you can say add and then say cursor, your responsibility is to look into these things. For example, you have to look into the terminal I've got, you have to look into the cursor rules I've got, you have to look into the files and folders I've got. So you can basically tell cursor to look into these different things that will make cursor have more knowledge about what you're trying to do. 
and if you want to do something in agent mode it is always recommended to go change a model where you can enable thinking so there are some models like claude 3.5 7 sonnet that has got thinking mode enabled so cursor has got two variants of Claude 3.7 Sonnet. One is the 3.7 Sonnet. The second one is the 3.7 Sonnet Max, which is quite expensive. So you can always select the thinking mode if you're trying to do something that requires multiple iteration. Imagine like you have to be in a room for brainstorming with the developers, then this is the one. If you're doing like mundane changes, then you can go select some other model, like for example, GPT-40, Gemini 2.5 Pro X. So all these models are good if you're trying to do things that do not require multiple people to contemplate things. But if you want like somebody to go back and forth and think about things, then you have to enable the thinking model. And finally, you've got the ask, which is like you can go ask about things and give context and all the other things. So I've got this thing. Let's say I've just cloned this project. And now let us say I have no clue how to run this project. For this, I don't need thinking mode. I'm going to say I want to run this project. That's all I'm going to say, okay? Nothing more, nothing less. And once I do this, cursor is going to read my current folder and it is trying to understand everything. And then it is going to give me a basic information about how I can run this particular project. So it says, okay, this is Viber 3D. I've got to go into my terminal, which you can already do it. You can just click this run button and uh, it will just go to your terminal and then start running this code. So cursor has got this context of code editor and also your terminal. So until you have to start the development server, everything is available here for you to do with cursor. So now we learned how to kick start with a scratch project, like completely from scratch. We learned how to copy a project and then build on top of it. Now, the most important thing, if you are a non-developer that you have to pay attention is these tools are sometimes very, very bad. They make rampant changes. They do a lot of different changes. Finally, it is very hard for you to understand what it is doing. So for that, the most important thing that you have to learn to do is something called Git. If you have never done Git, this is a very simple way of, you know, having different changes recorded as a history. So it's like you have got like Google Drive or something here and there. So you would see all the changes, the historical changes. The same thing that you have to do for computer programming, we call it a version control and it can be connected to a GitHub account. So you can basically connect all these things, have different commits. So for example, this is the first cursor change commit. So if you connect it to a GitHub repo, you can connect it or in fact, you can generate the commit message. So for example, let's say I've made some changes. Um, um, so like I'm chatting here and then doing something, then you can generate the cursor message, a uh, commit message with cursor itself. So it's very important for you to regularly commit whenever you make a change, because that will give you the ability to go um, go back to a previous version or previous checkpoint if something is messed up and I'm pretty sure something will be messed up as your code base and size increases. And the next thing that you have to keep in mind is even if you're constantly generating commit messages and committing, one of the best things that you can do is create a document, create a simple history.md which will contain uh, the latest project development and changes. So always keep a tracker file, something like this and tell cursor itself to create it for you. So I've just done it in ask mode, which ideally I should have done it in agent mode. So cursor can read the existing things and then it can understand what is the current code base, what kind of changes we are doing it. And then it can store it in a tracker file, which you can always use whenever you restart a new cursor session. So this will be extremely helpful if you have to close it and then come back and then start using it. Another great feature that a lot of people do not do, but you should ideally be doing it so that can help you. So these are different ways you can get started with cursor, make sure that cursor doesn't mess up with your code. And even if it messes up, you can go back in time and fix it. And also make sure that every new time you open a cursor session, you have got a previous memory or a previous history that is stored. And like I said, there are like different models that you can access. There is an agent mode, ask mode, edit mode, make sure that you use the best model, the right model for the given task. And like I said, you can always access your terminal and anything else that you have got and cursor will make sure that you are doing the right job for this right task. And finally, if everything is done and dusted, you can make a push 
to the github repository here like you know your own github repository and everything is available online so that you can go use it again and again i hope this getting started with cursor tutorial was helpful to you if you have any question please let me know in the comment section otherwise see you in another video happy prompting